I'm gonna make two videos on this subject because I feel inspired today. And I'm shrugging my neck around to say like, why not? But that's really my mentality for this whole thing. Why not? Why the fuck not? And one of those things I want to speak to you about is what I've learned from the Trayvon and Ferguson situations. Uh, both are similar stories in that a someone with a gun and a position of authority. One was a cop, another was a neighborhood watch guy. Shot a young unarmed teen and people are playing narrative games. People are over politicizing this issue and giving it too much news coverage. And with the Trayvon issue, this was the case, but now with Ferguson and the riots that have happened and everything, it's it's set in principle. We have to talk about what excessive force is. You thought I was going to like bring up the racial thing, but I'm not going to do that for now because I already did that. I already said that this is always going to be a racial thing because the racial narrative trumps all. Anyone who tries to make it into something else, uh, they're only fooling themselves. But I just want to speak to you about what excessive force is, because nowadays it seems that if you have the gun and the person who's attacking you doesn't have a gun, it seems that no matter what, it's always an excessive use of force. And that that's from the public's perspective. Legally, it's a little more nuanced and complicated than that. And I want to get to that, because I'm not a law genius. In fact, I never did well in law class because I didn't do shit with the essays, didn't write essays. I don't like writing essays with like specific rubrics, with specific structures, and every sentence has to be done a certain way. I don't like that shit. And, but, I want to say this because Trayvon Martin and this Michael Brown character, they're both big guys, and both the guys that shot Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown, these guys were outmatched, and they had like they had damage done to them they were there's been some assault that they've had I mean, Zerman had some like cuts on him uh, these are people that they had a reasonable excuse to shoot these kids down it sounds morbid and macabre but this is the case there was a bit of reason. Let me go into a hypothetical. Let's say that there's a seven foot five white guy. I'm only thinking white guy because I'm I'm picturing this guy in the beach I saw like two years ago playing volleyball. He was a seven foot five tall humongous white dude playing volleyball with his prep jock buddies and a couple of chicks. And this guy definitely looked like he could kick my ass. I saw him. I could imagine him. Imagine this guy, like, kicking my head. This Ken doll-looking ass nigga kicking my head. And I'm moving across the room like a soccer ball. You know, kicking me around the room. I'm ricocheting off walls. He's... Punching me down and shit, like, doing some, like, ground and pound shit the way, like, Brock Lesnar was fucking John Cena up last pay-per-view. Um, if I have a gun with me and I manage to, like, you know, pull it out and shoot him. Was that excessive force? Now, I could understand the legal system the way it's set up. If I was, like, 
unloading every round on him, even if he was unable to defend himself, then maybe you could call it excessive. But other than that, if I'm just like, I shoot him once and he falls and he dies instantly, uh, is that like, would that be considered too much? I mean, it was a poor choice of analogy, but still, like, imagine that. Was that too much? Now, this guy was bigger than me, probably had more weight than me. He could definitely outclass me athletically, uh, and he was more aggressive than me. In a one-on-one -on -one fight, I stand no chance against him. I'm 125 pounds. I'm five foot six. I'm 19 years of age. Let's see, have I done anything athletic in my life at any point? I used to lift weights, but that's not really a sport. Uh, that was just like you know, 15, 25 uh, pounders. Like your girlfriend probably lifts more weights than me, but. Did I stand a chance? Okay, did I have... Was I... Did I have a right to use a gun to defend myself? Or... Was I automatically... Disqualified from using the gun because he didn't have a gun? Or a weapon... Himself? I mean, what's the point of having a weapon for self-defense? Think about this. What's the point of having a weapon for self-defense if you can only use it if the other person is armed? Like, what's the point of Second Amendment rights or things of these na nature? Like, the right to arm yourself. What's the point of that if it can only be used to protect yourself from those who are also armed? Not just like, like, people that have a reasonable intimidation factor, like, really. they're stronger than you, more aggressive than you, they have a higher position of authority than you. No, just like, a, you can only use those rights to protect yourself, self-defense only applies to people that have the same weapons as you. Uh, that's, that's a little ridiculous, I think that's crazy. But, who knows, I've been wrong about a lot of things in my life, so. That's what I have to say for this issue. But, again, this was inspired by some of the more rational comments I've seen because... That is actually not a 100% dumb statement. I mean, when you put yourself in the shoes of the victim, statistically speaking, most of you watching this video, if not all of you watching this video, you're not over 6 foot 3. You're that's like 3% of the population. People are 6 foot 3 and up. You're not that big, um if you're heavy, I assume it's not because you've been lifting weights. I assume it's a plethora of other stuff like fat, some muscle, maybe bone density. I have no clue. That could that last one could be really stupid, but I mean, if you put yourself in the shoes of a Trayvon or a Michael Brown, you would think that was too much. I mean, I know that if. It would have been me, and I would have gotten shot by a neighborhood watch guy or a police officer. I would think it'd be a bit excessive because I wouldn't put my hands on an officer. I've been frisked before. I've been, and it's a scary experience. But I don't think I would have ever like punched them, you know, banged their head on the wall, scraped them, and shit. I would have never tried that, and 
even them, the pigs, are, they're a little big. They're a little on the hefty side, so I wouldn't get too far with that. So if you, if us average Joes, if unathletic guys, or I don't even say average Joes, I'll say us untouchables, us unfuckables, if we were in that similar situation, uh, it would be in a different story, like, it would be excessive, because uh, I pose no threat, no one's going to be intimidated by me, unless I was tripping out on drugs, I got, like, some type of angel dust super strength, uh, there would be no reason, like, if I was, like, the Steve Urkel type, like, and I am the Steve Urkel type. I, I would have been dead on the floor. And, uh... I would have said no chance. There would be no reasonable suspicion that... Or reasonable sense that I'm a threat to this guy where he needs to defend himself. That won't happen. But yes, I do kind of agree. If you are armed... It, I would understand why someone would think it's excessive, but stop putting yourself in the shoes of victims all the time. You need to stop doing that because you are not the same person as the victim nine times out of ten. Like You are not Trayvon Martin. You are not Michael Brown. Stop living vicariously through them. And making them into martyrs, which they would never want to be, probably. I mean, I wouldn't want to be a martyr. I think that it'd be prophetic if you wanted to make yourself a martyr if you were in a similar situation. So, that needs to stop. This whole fiasco is a mess, but... It isn't excessive force. I doubt it is. They had reasons to be worried, even if the other person wasn't armed. And anyway, this has been Mr. Rocket 7. Um, respect the king. I don't, I don't know what to say. I always know what to say.